Hello there! What is going on everyone? Today we're going to be taking a look at Nemesis Retaliation and asking the question, should you pledge for this? Uh, this is currently on GameFound right now. If you're not familiar with GameFound, it's a crowdfunding platform, very similar to Kickstarter. Uh, it has a lot more uh, European games, a lot of the Polish produced games, games by Awaken Realms and similar companies. Uh, typically have been migrating over to GameFound as opposed to Kickstarter, uh, but the same sort of uh, model that you're going to kind of pledge for something to get uh, created. And for larger companies like Awaken Realms, uh, think of it more as a glorified pre-order system because there's absolutely no chance this one does not get funded. In fact, it's currently uh, sitting at over $4 million, uh, $4 million as far as how much it has raised so far, and there's still about two weeks to go. And so with that level of success, this is a very, very high level of success. We're going to be taking a look at the, the GameFound pledge page for this, taking a look at what makes this one different from some of the other Nemesis games, and uh, maybe finding out for yourself if you should pledge for Nemesis Retaliation. I'll be looking at it along with you because I am also on the fence with this particular game. So I'm going to be making my decision in this video, and we'll kind of walk through it. Now, if you guys are new here to the channel, I do talk a lot about Star Wars tabletop games, uh, science fiction tabletop games, and lots of lots of geeky, nerdy tabletop games, especially games with miniatures. And uh, the original Nemesis was one of my favorite games of all time. And as such, I've done a lot of uh, collaborations with Awaken Realms. This is not a collaboration with Awaken Realms or GameFound. This is me completely on my own, independently going out and taking a look at this game. Uh, we, you know, our the relationship uh, between this channel and the uh, GameFound is doesn't really exist anymore. Not that there's anything bad. It's just we've kind of drifted apart. And uh, so this is totally just me doing uh, whatever I wanted. To do and uh, since I, I was genuinely such a huge fan of Nemesis uh, and have worked with uh, Awaken Realms in the past, I definitely wanted to take a look at this game. And I know some of you guys have been asking me, so if you're interested in hanging out, we are going to be doing our 12 days of Life Day giveaways in December. So, all throughout December, 12 different days, we're going to be doing surprise giveaways. I'll be announcing those at the end of my videos. Uh, you just have to be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos to enter to win that. So, it's very easy to enter to win. Uh, and then, of course, if I call out your name and show your little picture at the end of one of my videos, that means you won whatever I, whatever I, that day's giveaway happens to be. There'll be surprise giveaways, uh, ranging everything from game promos to uh, gift cards and more. Uh, so you will be able to have a chance to enter and win those. Uh, anything that does not get claimed within 30 days will roll over into Patreon, so my patrons will get bonus chances at extra stuff. Uh, and with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this campaign because it's uh, it's pretty cool. So here we are. We are at the GameFound campaign. I'm going to put a link to this down in the video description below so you can jump over there and check it out for yourself. Again, I'm not getting any kickbacks for this. Um, I don't know if uh, Awaken Realms is going to send me a review copy of this or not. I have no idea. Um, they have sometimes done that. Uh, usually when I've co cooperated with them and kind of we had some kind of arrangement or whatever, but uh, there's this is totally independent. This is totally on me. And uh, of course I had to look at this. Now this is the third and final installment of the Nemesis franchise. I didn't realize that they were going to be doing three altogether. Um, I will say that I think the perf uh, the, the first Nemesis game is is almost a perfect game. It's got, I mean, it's definitely got a couple of quirks and, you know, things that it, that it could do a little bit better, and that's one of the things I think they're trying to do here. And then Nemesis Lockdown, uh, different setting, also really, really great game uh, with some improvements to the system, uh, although I'm a little more partial to the classic Nemesis uh, personally myself. I think I like the uh, spaceship setting better than the space station setting, but I probably... Uh, it's probably because I've played the classic Nemesis so much more. It's a lot easier for me to teach that to newer players as opposed to getting into some of the the like the room lighting and uh, intricacies of, of Nemesis Lockdown. But I probably need to play Lockdown a little bit more, which for me is going to influence this. I'm like, hey, I still haven't, you know, I still haven't played, I, I still love to play Nemesis and I still haven't played Lockdown uh, enough times to really kind of work it out. Am I really ready for a third Nemesis game? And I think that's an interesting thing uh, to think about with this game because uh, this is the third game and it's going to be kind of different. It's going to be standalone. Now, one of the things they advertise in this game is you do not need to have any of the other Nemesis games to play it. Uh, so if you don't have a Nemesis game at all, this might be the perfect time to jump in. 
If you do have the other Nemesis games, like me, you're probably a fan, and you're probably thinking about getting in on this anyway. So that's what's going on now. Um, right above me here, you're going to see that they have the Nemesis Retaliation Collector's Pledge 189 reduced from 210. Now, if this is a little sticker shock to you, I want to warn you, this is the most expensive pledge. This is kind of the deluxe pledge. You're getting pretty much everything in this pledge, which if you compare this to uh, a typical zombie side, Simon Kickstarter or whatever, where they typically to get everything, it's usually a thousand dollars or close to it. Uh, this one is just a fraction of that and you're getting a lot of content for that. So that's something, but there are cheaper options available that don't involve you having to get everything. So, uh, so, all right. So they're basically this game. Now there's a little video you can play. I'm not going to run through the whole video here. Uh, this game is going to play a little bit more like like a zombie side. Um, you are returning to fight the the intruders or the aliens. They don't call them aliens in here because again, the, the Nemesis franchise has a draws a lot of inspiration from like 80s and 90s science fiction, especially from the Aliens franchise. Uh, so they are very careful not to use that term because they don't want to infringe on copyright. However, anybody looking at it can see a lot of parallels between the Alien movies. Uh, now. This uh, th this particular game is uh, kind of reminding me of the aliens with the plural, the sequel that they sent Marines to go after aliens, and instead of just having like one or two, uh, you know, aliens to, well, to fight, they are gonna have to face an infestation. You're facing a horde of aliens with this one, and uh, or intruders, and they are. They're changed a little bit. One of the things that draws my attention is this queen, who's kind of like a, a an ultimate boss, uh, looks more like a human alien hybrid. And so I wonder, like, with the story of this game, if they've kind of eaten one of the uh, you know the people from the previous games and uh, have begun to morph. Because there are some changes to these aliens. They're, these intruders are going to have uh, you know their own rule set, but they're going to have a lot of them. You're going to be having a board that is full of, of alien miniatures, uh, as opposed to just having like one or two on the table like you would have in, in the other games. You're going to have a lot in this game. So you're going to be getting a lot of plastic, which is surprising for only $189 to get everything, that you're getting that much plastic. I think the base game pledge, too, is much cheaper than that. And we'll look at some of the pledges. Uh, but I think there's another thing is that the size of these miniatures is uh, probably going to be smaller. Uh, I, I say probably going to be because... It's kind of hard to tell right now. So uh, we're going to scroll down a little bit. Um, you know, the, the core box for Nemesis uh, is 109. If you want to get the core box, I think this is with the... They have a version with miniatures and they have a version with standees. Now, if you're backing an Awakened Realms game, I would definitely suggest getting the miniatures. Standees are just little cardboard cutouts. That's okay. But Awakened Realms makes really good miniatures. Their miniatures are gorgeous, and especially the detail of the aliens and the intruders, rather, for all of the other Nemesis games are one of the biggest selling points for the game. Now, granted, the gameplay is absolutely spectacular, and so it's so rare to find a board game that has really good gameplay and also really highly detailed miniatures, like paintable, gorgeous, like shelf display piece quality miniatures. Um, it's rare to get uh, those two at such high levels combined into one thing. And that's where Nemesis really kind of hit a home run. So you're going to get great great miniatures here, I have no doubt. Uh, I do think they're going to be smaller than the original Nemesis miniatures. But you're going to get so many more to make up for that. And again, it's going to be easier to move around like, you know, 20 little, you know, a horde of like all these little intruders on the board if they're smaller. If they're giant miniatures like with Nemesis, it's going to be harder to move, you know, to fill up the board and uh, and to move them around. So I think it's definitely, everything's kind of pointing towards these miniatures being smaller. Um, but they're going to have some stretch goal boxes. They're going to have a Neo Flesh Cult, uh, a new intruder race with 50 plus models and just, a in just an expansion box uh, of just new alien types. Compare that to our, I think, like like the Carnomorphs or whatever, where we you have uh, like twelve or something like that. So you get a lot more here. Um, maybe it's not twelve. I'm not sure exactly, but you don't usually use that many at a time. And they give you quite a few, but you know what? How many? I think the most amount of intruders I've ever had on the board at once was five. Uh, so it's you know usually it's like one or two. Uh, in rare cases, you get more than that. Um, and there's also a small secrets expansion. There's new characters that are uh, that are being worked on. Um, 
it's being advertised as the final uh, part of an epic horror sci-fi trilogy. Uh, look, I, I, I don't know if this will actually be the final part. Uh, it, like, it, What I mean by that is I don't know if this will be the final part of Nemesis. I think what was likely to happen is they'll start a new trilogy, right? Um, uh, I don't think there's any way that you know they have this expansion that's still got two weeks to go and uh, will probably hit like $6 million or so before the end of it. Uh, I don't think you have a, a campaign like that and you say, all right, let's not do any more. I just don't think there's any t any any chance of that. Uh, look at these mock-ups, though. These miniatures look absolutely incredible. That queen looks super groovy. It looks like a cross between, like, Lilith from Diablo 4 and then, like, uh, Morrigan uh, from uh, from StarCraft. Um, like, very, I'm getting a very, like, Zerg queen, uh, you know, and high. It definitely has a whole lot of Zerg rush kind of stuff going on here. All right, so the standard edition of Nemesis Retaliation is only $65. That's if you want to get the uh, standees. Uh, the special edition has the miniatures. That's $109. So think of it as the base game is $109. That, that might seem like a lot for a board game, but if you follow this channel and the types of games that we talk about, a lot of, a lot of games like Star Wars Legion and, and tabletop skirmish games, or deluxe board games, 109 is a is pretty decent for a, 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 a miniatures-heavy board game. Especially something from Awaken Realms that is sure to be good. I, I'm i basing part of this off of the history. I've, I have not played this. I haven't played this on TTS. I don't have a demo copy. I wasn't sent a review copy of this. So I, don't, I can't tell you firsthand. But what I can tell you firsthand is that the other two Nemesis games are golden. They're wonderful. Um, especially the original Nemesis, which is, again, is one of my favorites. Um, I, it's kind of like one of my go-to games whenever I have uh, three or more people, because it, especially like especially if you've got a group of four or five, like it plays really good with five. I actually just played it a couple of weeks ago with some friends that had never played it before. I like to go with the classic Nemesis because it's easier for me to teach. I've taught it at Gen Con. I've taught it at uh, you know a lot of you know uh, social settings, and uh, it's just a game I really. I think I made how to play videos for it. So um, again, I really love Nemesis, and so it's kind of hard to just look at this and say, oh, I'm not going to back it. I mean, I think it's a great price too. Now, we'll look at what the, you're getting in the retaliator, uh, Retaliation Collector's Pledge. That's $189 because it's only $80 more than this and you're getting lots more stuff. Is that stuff you need? Maybe. Maybe not. Um, plus, Stretch Goal Box. You're going to be getting the Stretch Goal Box with the Special Edition um, box, I, it looks like. And uh, free with the Game Found Edition. So you won't be able to get the Stretch Goal Box after the fact. Now, if this game is as successful as it seems like it's definitely going to be... It's possible that if you wait for retail, you might be able to get a stretch goal box somehow. They may offer them in a future campaign. Um, you know, like, like, for example, in the original Nemesis, the Aftermath expansion came with like stretch goals and stuff like that. And all of that was part of the stretch goals. They eventually did sell that stuff um, regularly, but I think it was in like a different sized box. So it didn't necessarily you know, correlate. It wasn't exactly the same thing. And I think there was that medic miniature that you could only gotten with, with the initial Kickstarter campaign. I'm not sure if the medic miniature was available retail anywhere else. Uh, and that was a cool class because not only was it a different class um, and a new character, but it was like it was one that didn't cross over to all the extra expansion characters uh, and ended up being like a really good character to use. So you're going to get all the stretch goals with this 109 thing. And usually with knowing a game found campaign or knowing Awakened Realms, the stretch goals are going to have some really cool stuff in there. Maybe not stuff you super need. I'll say this. Most of the time when I play Nemesis, I'm just using the base game. I'm not using a lot of the extra stuff. Uh, I've used some of the extra stuff. I've used some of the extra characters. I've used the medic a couple of times. I've used some of the card-based scenarios too. Uh, and a lot of those actually didn't even come from the the kickstarter that it initially launched it uh, a lot of those were like you know special promotional things like the dice tower for one of their kickstarters had a little a micro expansion for nemesis it was like a card pack you could shuffle these cards in it as one mutator to the game or something like that a lot of little things like that they're very easy to add to a game because it's maybe just one card or maybe each person gets one extra card in their action deck or something like that so a lot of the smaller things are very easy to, to add to a game and that's very cool um, so the couple of changes to this game, you are coming into this, like in this landing zone, basically you're invading, you're taking the fight 
to the intruders. You are coming in as Marines. They are loaded. Uh, you're not going to have to worry about as uh, many things like like ammunition. Uh, it's going to be much less a factor, it seems like, in this game. The bigger... The bigger resource is going to be oxygen. Oxygen seems like it's going to be the big resource that's ticking down. You have like limited turns because you'll run out of air. And um, I'm guessing there's going to be crises and, and different events that can happen that might make you consume more than your normal amount of air. So you might think you've got four turns of air left and maybe you only have three because something's going to happen or even less. Um, you have these uh, upgraded dashboards that have health trackers on them. You don't have to put those little markers and serious wounds and things like that on you anymore. Um, you still, it looks like you still have basically around the same number of hit points per character, but it's being tracked a little bit more judiciously on the, uh, the upgraded dashboard. These dashboards look like a great improvement to the game. Uh, you have uh, like a tactical belt on the far left side. You've got reminders for all your actions on the right side. Uh, you've got a backpack, you have similar, a lot of things is, that are going to be very similar to somebody who's already played Nemesis, but Oxygen is like, I think, one of the biggest new things that they're adding to this. Uh, also, hallways, which uh, we'll, we'll get to here in a minute. Uh, but you got some really cool different types of weapons, flamethrowers, tactical armor, RPG launchers, a motion tracker, um, yeah, and then some different looks at the different uh, five player kind of set up there with the similar little standy boards that you've seen already and then of course your your player dashboards and uh, and different classes too every game has had different classes so far uh, so we've got uh, the captain uh, we've got and, and you're getting a look at the models too um, very similar to kind of how the soldier looks imagine playing nemesis when everybody's a soldier and you've got a lot more combat to do so you just kind of be a little bit like that you've got recon You've got a heavy gun operator. This one looks awesome. Uh, you also have a combat engineer. Definitely Alien 2 vibes on this one, or aliens. I say Alien 2, but yeah, you like Sigourney Weaver in the giant voter. Um, like this is this is a really cool looking thing. They've obviously it's not it's not the same thing, but it definitely uh, evokes that imagery a little bit. Uh, and then we've got a civilian contractor, which is uh, pretty cool too. Now the, another cool thing about this is a lot of times they will take feedback so if you're going to pledge and you're going to be in the campaign they'll have polls and things you can vote on what like the next uh, unlock is going to be and sometimes like the art isn't finalized yet um, and another interesting thing they while they say you don't have to have the other stuff it looks like they're trying to do a crossover pack so you can use some of the, your classic nemesis characters if you want to do that i don't know how that's going to work with this game i would wager you probably won't want to do that reason being a core tenant of this game is that you're going into this game as fully loaded out Marines. Right? You're coming into this game, you know, as like your combat engineer looks like this. He's super awesome. Just, just giant mech. Like he's like one of the most badass dudes on the planet or on another planet or wherever they're landing, right? On the ship that they're landing on. Um, but then do I want to come in with like the regular like mechanic or, or the scientist? Um, how, you know, the scientist is, you know, got mobility issues. He's he's in a, 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 a what a robotic wheelchair. He's in there to do science and to, and to do scientist experiments and the lab analysis and that sort of stuff that was critical to the gameplay in Nemesis One. Um, but in this game, which is, seems like it's going to be so much more combat driven, I don't think these non-combat characters, the uh, the mechanic, also not necessarily going to be in the same uh, kind of vein. Um, your scout. Also has, you know, a little bit of firepower and can move throughout stuff. So maybe the scout has some usage. The soldier seems like he'll have some usage, but the soldier is also, um, you know, a, 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 another version of just about every one of your other characters or probably the soldier plus a specialty. Um, and then the captain had some cool abilities that probably would work well in any version of Nemesis. But also the captain has kind of a weaker gun that he can, you know, he can reload it manually, but it's not like the strongest firepower. It's kind of mid-level. So I feel like the soldier would be um, the strongest of the original characters to add, but also probably the weaker, weaker than all of the other Marines that are all going to have their own specialty on top of being, you know, having that kind of training that the soldier would have. So unless they've like reworked these characters from the ground up, um, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know if they're really going to 
uh, be that useful, or maybe it's just meant to be, hey, let's up the difficulty a little bit and play as characters that are going to be terrible for this game. I don't know if I'd want to really do that. I feel like I'd want to play with characters that were designed for Nemesis Retaliation, uh, for Retaliation, because again, the, the flow and everything they've advertised for it, it seems like it's going to be so much more combat driven. It will still have the secret objectives. Uh, you're going to have like a public objective with this one and some secret objectives. And you can still have that whole trader mechanic. Uh, there's a really interesting aspect to that where you you kind of you can commit to one whenever you want, but the earlier you commit, the more of a reward you get. So like I think that's a really cool change that they've changed made to this game. But um, at the same time, the fact that there's so many creatures coming at you, uh, it, it, it seems like it might be a little bit more incentivizing you to play the the cooperative or to play the good guy rather than the bad guy. Um, but not that that's necessarily a problem. That's more of just an interesting thing. Um, I kind of like it when it... Look, regular Nemesis is hard enough when everybody's playing all good. It's it's hard enough to survive. I have never won at Nemesis. I almost did on this last one. Almost did. I was infected. I accomplished my mission. I got into the hibernation chamber, made it. It was like I was ready to go, uh, I, and I had to roll, and I failed the first roll, so I had to do this second check to see if an alien burst out of my chest, and I made it by the skin of my teeth. It was very, very, very lucky. And then after I'm in there, uh, they couldn't, the rest of the people tried, blow, they wanted to blow up the ship, but they couldn't, they weren't allowed to. Uh, and so then they were just trying to make it to an escape pod, and then an event came out that, you know, made more of the ship break, and then the ship kind of blew up because we had too many uh, repair markers on the ship. So... Like I'm like, and that was beyond my control. So I did everything right, and the ship still blew up because everybody else was incompetent. So again, it's really hard to win, even when people are playing nice. Uh, but like, I don't. So I don't think that's necessarily a problem for this game. The whole, all you need is the possibility for people to be traitors to add that that level of doubt to really amp up the 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 fun of it. So let's talk about these hallways. This is a whole different big thing, big, big thing. So that this, the other really big change to this game, I think there are three significant changes. I think it's the oxygen being your resource, which is a significant change. Uh, the Maybe the biggest change is the fact that you're fighting a whole horde of aliens instead of just one. Uh, so again, the, 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 the fundamental mechanic of the game seems like it's shifted towards combat as opposed to exploration, but there still is exploration. And that's where we get into this third ch uh, change, and that you have this sort of open room format, uh, these cards that are going to flip over and say, are oh, you going to this room? There's hallways coming out of here and here and here. But the hallways themselves are basically rooms. You can move into the hallways. You can have uh, aliens in the hallways. And you have some rooms that some, you know, basically out of each hex, you'll have certain walls that don't connect to a hallway or do connect to a hallway. And so trying to like explore the ship is a lot different than it would have been otherwise because it's kind of open format or open concept and that it can you can go any which way or you might have to take the long way around because this way is closed off this game and it's going to be uh, dynamically determined at the draw of a card how you pull these rooms. Now, a lot of the rooms are going to have uh, overlap with room types that you've seen already. There's a hibernatorium in here. There'll be like a med bay and, and a lot of the similar things that you've already seen plus some new rooms as well. Uh, there's also going to be a nest uh, and that's, you know, you're going to have to get on board and probably have to clear out the nest or probably have to clear a number of, um, of different rooms. They have a, a way that you can move and secure. You can secure, you can place like secure tokens down in a room. I think that means that where like intruders won't spawn behind you. So you can kind of, you get that feel of we're advancing forward and we're securing as we go, which is very cool. Um, and the, like the, these rooms will connect with this lock system. Uh, it seems like it's going to be pretty cool. It seems like it's going to be pretty cool. I wonder, although oh, oh, under repeat playing, if these edges will start to fray a little bit. Uh, it says they have a, a one to two millimeter reserve to prevent abrasion. And I'm like, well, like, all right, this seems like that. But over time, maybe they'll get worn out a little bit. I'm not sure. I think it wouldn't be that big of a deal. Even if they did, you just take care of it like you would. You know, this is probably not a game you want to play with young children. And plus, the subject matter is a little bit kind of gory and a little bit horror-esque. So, you probably teenagers and up is uh, what I would guess. Um, but, you know, you can make that call yourself. Uh, you do have certain parts that are kind of static with the map or that you kind of build the frame of the map. So, let's scroll up a little bit more. Um, 
you can see above here uh, or to, to the side, uh, you know, you, you build that left hand side and then the top side and then all the rest of this is going to be populated as you explore, which I think is really groovy. Um, groovy is a word that I've been saying a lot more uh, in the past year because of this, because of this Pete the Cat book that we read with the kids. And he always says groovy. And, and, you know, if you've got small children, if you've ever read a Pete the Cat book, maybe you'll know what I'm talking about. Anyway, that was a sidebar. Um, all right, so they're, they're going to show you some of the new uh, the room tiles. Uh, you, you got all these different corridors. The corridors have numbers on them. They're kind of like, you know, how that noise system, how you'd roll the die and it would be on the tile. Now it is on the hallways and uh, on the hallways themselves, which is pretty interesting. And the cool thing about this is... Um, from what I gather, that you can have different uh, hallways connected to the same room, or you can have all of the same number. Like you could have all fours connected to the same room, which is great if you roll anything other than a four. But if you do roll a four, then all of a sudden everybody gets populated, and so it can it can be, you know, it can be a lot m less predictable, which I think is kind of interesting. You got your item cards, you got your doors, uh, a lot of the same stuff that you've already seen in the previous Nemesis. If you've seen. These tokens before, I'm not going to be surprised because this is the same kind of dice and tokens and things that you've saw in the other Nemesis games. Again, there's going to be a lot of overlap here, which is one of the reasons why maybe, you know, maybe you don't need to get this game if you've already got the other Nemesis games. If you're happy with what you've got already, this might not be, you know, different enough from what you have that makes you want to get it. Um, now, this is a, 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 a picture I want to, I want to kind of zoom in on. Let me see if I can zoom in on that a little bit more detail. The, um, whoop, oh, I got to grow up a little bit. These guys, this, this little chart, this miniature scale comparison here, um, doesn't really tell me anything because this is only, they're like, there's no, there's no millimeters here. There's no size. Um, initially, when I first heard about this game, it was that the miniatures were going to be really, really small and not compatible with the other games. I've also heard that they've made some changes, and that they're they're like they're increasing the size at least on the the heroes, uh, which they may be doing to maybe make the heroes more compatible. But still, we don't know what's here now. There are some videos out there of folks who have had review copies sent to them. It's not made clear at all if though because there's always that disclaimer this does not represent the final game we have no idea how big this is gonna what what size this is so all of the comparison means nothing because we don't know how big this is uh, i don't know if the queen is going to be this big i don't know if she's gonna be this big i don't know if she's gonna be this big i don't know if she's gonna be this big right she's not definitely not gonna be this big and for that price i think that for 189 for everything that we're gonna get that means that these have to be small they have to be small. I, I'm guessing the queen is probably going to be about uh, about three inches tall. And then the, the heroes are going to be about one inch, one and a half inches. You know, um, probably a little smaller than the existing heroes from, from the, your other Nemesis games. But now keep in mind, all those intruders, all those aliens that you had, um, most of your adults were like twice as tall as the, as the regular dudes. And then the queen was even taller than that, and then the you know, and all the the big aliens were even taller than that. Um, most of the intruders were not, you know, not even close to being smaller than your regular heroes. So, and it also is weird that they have like this guy here when he's not the second tallest. This other guy is taller than him. So why wouldn't it be like her than him than him than you know? It's just kind of it's 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 a weird scale comparison. Um, because it's got no scale in it at all. Um, it's relative to something without a frame of reference, so I don't I don't understand um, what's really what they're trying to tell me here. Um, one thing you can figure out is that most of your aliens are smaller than the people, so they're going to be very small. And if we knew how big even one of these was, uh, you know, and maybe it's not decided yet. Maybe they don't know. And so if the size of the miniatures is important to you, because maybe you were hoping to like mix this and the other games, I know there was like with Nemesis and Nemesis Lockdown, there was definitely some, some crossover where you could use some, you know, this type in this game. And you know, there's a little bit of back, backwards compatibility. It doesn't look like you're going to be able to do that here. Um, of course, you can always homebrew it if you want to. But I think the whole concept of having this horde in regular Nemesis would be overwhelmingly bad. And I don't think anybody would want to do that. So 
so yeah, so that's um, that's interesting. Uh, let's let's go back and and take a look at the rest of the stuff. Our, our queen look still looks really groovy. This is now again, this is still a mock-up. This isn't necessarily final render, but there's a whole lot of detail. They're they're going through effort to show you like this kind of rocky, fleshy, leathery sort of hide, um, and and I think showing a standee in front of the model is like meant to make it look like the physical model's like ten times bigger than the standee. But again, I don't necessarily think that that's uh, going to be the case. And uh, I have a feeling, you know, everything I've seen for this indicates that these are going to be very, very small, so you can have a horde of them. Again, the, the, the cardboard hexes and everything aren't that big. And if you're going to have like four or more of these on a, on, a, on a hallway at a time, that's just not going to work unless they're super tiny. So I expect like these guys to be like, you know, 10 millimeter bases or 8 millimeter bases, like really small really small, like smaller than a dime, you know. Um, that's kind of how I'm expecting most of these, uh, with some of the bigger ones being about closer to a nickel, maybe the queen being like a quarter-sized base. That's kind of how I kind of envision it. Maybe we'll be wrong. I'm, st I'm really not sure. Um, if they send me a review copy, I'll uh, love to check it out uh, and, and, and see. Because um, I'm really not sure if I'm going to back this. This is definitely something I would love to play, I definitely would want to play this. I definitely would want this on my tabletop. But at the same time, I'm really, you know, very satisfied with the nemesis that I already have. I think the big turning point for me is how this plays with two players. Because regular nemesis doesn't play very well with, with two players. If this one has uh, <laughs> more of a cooperative leaning than the other games, then sure. Then maybe it'd be a better, like, a two-player game. Or a better solo game. Or something like that. Um... So that's kind of a big uh, push for me. And, you know, I don't really, without having played it multiple times and kind of comparing like a five-player game versus a two-player game is like, was there something that was lacking, you know, or did it still just work out? You know, that's one of the big things that kind of concerns me. Uh, I'm just not really sure. Here you sort of have like a queen and, and, a, and a, uh, one of the humans uh, on here. Now, the queen looks a little bit big on here, uh, but again, these... I don't know if these are final mock-ups or, or how exactly it's going to look. Um, got a lot of similar components. They got the bag mutation, the bag development. You have a really awesome little sheet here that is going to remind you what uh, what tokens do which, which I thought is awesome. I think all the games should have had that. Um, you've got your contamination cards and your scanner. I love that aspect of the other Nemesis games. Very cool stuff. Limited oxygen. You have this robot, uh, which is pretty cool and they got different mods for them i'm you know like it looks like you'll be able to build your your miniature based on the type of cards you get for the robot which seems pretty cool uh i know i'm saying pretty cool a lot it's 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 it seems that way it seems like it might be fun i don't know if it'll add more complexity than is necessary but i don't think so i think the robot looks uh looks groovy and i like that the card changes the way the robot is it's not something you really need to have but it's it's a it's a fun thing. I like having my miniatures look cool. And I like having the tabletop look cool, and uh, and that's fun. Like here, they show four of those monsters on a uh, four of the aliens on on a hallway. And the hallways are very narrow. They look very small. So again, that's why I say they look like they're about a dime. They look like they're super tiny, and uh, that's why I'm thinking all of this stuff is going to be much smaller than you might think. Especially if you've played the other Nemesis games and you're thinking, oh well. I'm, an intruder is this big, you know, like the queens were like that big. I'm like, I think the queen's going to be like that big, you know, well, not shaped. I did a teardrop shape. I don't know. My, my, my hands aren't perfectly circular. Let's talk about pledges and talk about the different things that you can get here. Now, if you want have played Nemesis before and you missed out and you're trying to get all kinds of other stuff, you can go, you can pledge pretty big and get all the old games too. There's a lot of stuff that you can get in here. Terrain packs, acrylic token packs, uh, untold Stories, which is some extra, like a comic book with some extra missions and scenarios that you can do. An alternative queen miniature, uh, an art book, the play mat, uh, sleeves, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, if, we, if we click on the Retaliation Collector's Pledge, it's going to have that core box. Um, I believe this is the one with the miniatures. Um, you're going to get the Stretch Goals box, which you would also have for 109, right? Um, you're going to get the terrain pack. Now, the terrain pack will basically, like in all of their games, it, that replaces the cardboard standees um, with the 
with, with plastic stuff, so your doors. Now the doors here are supposed to open and close, so they're gonna be nicer doors. Um, you're gonna get the acrylic token pack. Uh, this is gonna update your, your cardboard tokens for acrylic, that's usually a nice thing. Untold stories, I'll be honest with you, I have never even opened any of the untold stories from the other Nemesis games. Um, I couldn't, I can't even comment on them because I'm just not interested uh, in those. Uh, I think it's cool that they're doing it, but I don't, I have a lot of other games that I play. So even though I love this game, I don't play it like every week. And so like I haven't exhausted the, the core gameplay enough to need different scenarios. Um, it's, it's something I'm open to at some point, but it's just not something that I've been interested in doing yet. And I don't see that really changing in the future. Um, Nemesis Retaliation Playmat. Uh, Playmats are cool. I, I don't know if... Um, can I get more info on this? Um, I don't know if it's going to... Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try and look at it. You're getting the high-quality miniatures. Um, I think that's the miniatures that are the core box and the special edition. So it's giving you basically the... I'm putting an extra item in here, but you're getting the special edition uh, of the core box because it's got the miniatures. And then you're getting an art book. Now, the art book is probably the one thing that nobody would ever buy individually um, because you're going to have the art in the game itself. And, uh, you know, I, I just don't... Like, so many games come with art books nowadays. I just don't understand. I don't get it. Uh, and maybe some people just like having books of the art. Granted, I get that the art is really cool, but unless it's... Like, this, the only game I ever thought would be cool to get an art book was from, like, Fantasy Flight or from Asmodee for all their Star Wars games because I happen to really love the art that's in those games. And it's usually, the art is usually cut off on the cards, and I'd like to be able to see all of it. But that's just me, because I'm a super Star Wars nut. I don't know, maybe you're a super Nemesis nut. And, I mean, I'm a big fan of Nemesis, but I just don't want an art book for that. Um, so the playmat could be a cool thing, although I've got a lot of playmats, and I feel like any playmat's going to work. Um, and then the acrylic pack. The terrain pack is kind of hit or miss. Uh, I have... I've always, wanted, I've always gotten the terrain packs before. I've always wanted the terrain packs for all of my games. But I'll f find that more often than not, when I am, you know, like if I'm going somewhere and I'm bringing the game with me, I'm not. Br I'm trying to bring as few boxes as I can, so I end up not bringing the terrain pack, and I just end up using the cardboard uh, terrain because it fits in the core box already so well. So I end up not using the terrain pack as much as I thought I would. Um, but I've used it in at least one game. I can say that. I've used it at least one time. So that's everything that you're getting for $189. I will say that you probably could get the exact same gaming experience for just getting the deluxe version of the game for 109 so you could save 80 bucks on a lot of stuff that you may or may not use or you could get stuff a la carte and just add hey I do want the play mat but that's the only extra thing I want or I want the acrylic tokens. Uh, I think the acrylic tokens is probably the best thing to get out of all of these. Um, just happen to like acrylic tokens and uh, but and it just depends on on you. I'd like I don't need the playmat, but I think the playmat's cool. Like I would love to get this collector's pledge, but I'm also money's not super like money's kind of tight. It's holiday time right now. A lot of people have Christmas or you know Kwanzaa or Hanukkah or or, or, or you know like they have holiday gifting to think about right now. So this can be tough to commit to a two hundred dollar pledge. You know, and there's going to, there's going to be some shipping costs in here as well. I'm not sure where the shipping costs are. Let's jump down to shipping. Um, all right, here is... like So if you get the collector's edition, uh, and I am in the USA, that's going to be 30 extra dollars for shipping. So we're looking at 220 bucks, or two, technically 219 um, So that's going to be that's gonna be expensive. It's maybe you add... Especially if you add, do any add-ons or anything like that. And a lot of that stuff I don't, don't know if you really need. So it can be tough to do around holiday time. Now, this could be a great gift for somebody that you, as a gamer in your life, maybe you just get them the pledge and you just print it out and say, hey, um, this is going to be coming, but it's not going to show up for like a year or however long it takes. Again, these, these things take a while to get printed and made and then shipped out, but Awaken Realms has a good track record. So they're definitely trustworthy and they're definitely, you're going to have a fun game. I'm sure this is going to be a super fun game. It looks... Like, uh, like it's going to be super fun. And I think these are images from some of their other campaigns. Um, yeah, but they have great quality. Um, every game I've ever seen of theirs has been beautiful. Super, super fun. Uh, I have reviewed quite a few of them. Nemesis being my favorite. Um, and one of the games that doesn't get as much attention uh, is uh, the, the Greek one, Lords of Hellas. Uh, I, I really loved that one too. Um, but they have they have great games. And I really like, I really enjoy Awakened Realms' stuff. So I think it's a great game. 
But I think if you've already got Nemesis, a, a version of Nemesis that you maybe haven't played enough, um, you might be able to wait for retail. I wouldn't necessarily mind paying a markup uh, and waiting for retail, especially because of the time of year it is. I don't know if I can really uh, afford to spend like 230 or $220 on a pledge for a game that has a lot of overlap with another game that I've already got. Um, so that's that's the thing. I'm sure I would love this game, uh, but I also don't know if they're going to ever send me a review copy. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes company, you know, pu publishers will do that without me, uh, without even emailing me. Sometimes things just show up. Um, and so, like, with that level of uncertainty, I'll probably pass on this one for now. Again, I can probably always pick it up at retail someday, um, you know, if, if, if it comes out. But that's kind of where my mind is at. It does look like a very fun game. I think if you're a fan of Nemesis, uh, it's probably a very safe bet that you'll have a great time with this game. Uh, I just think that there's... Uh, I haven't played enough Nemesis Lockdown yet, so I don't think I've made it really to Part 3 in the trilogy yet. But I'd love to hear what you guys think. Uh, I'll put a link to this down in the video description below. You can check that out. And, uh, and, th and that is going to do it for our look at Nemesis Retaliation. Let me know what your thoughts are. Have you played any of the Nemesis games or any other Awakened Realms titles before? Do you like games with miniatures? Uh, it's If you haven't played any version of Nemesis yet, you're missing out. Very, very fun games. The entire concept of semi-cooperative is wonderful. You're all kind of working together towards common goals, but everybody has their own special win condition. It's just a beautiful game. It's super fun. I'll put some links over here so you can check out some of my takes on Nemesis and its other versions uh, at your leisure. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Big thanks to my patrons. You guys are absolutely amazing and help make this channel possible. I will talk to you later. May the force be with you. Live long and prosper. Be excellent to each other. The spice must flow. And always wash your socks.